Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people of God. Thank you for watching my channel. Subscribe and like. Today's gist is about Pastor Okonko and the wife. This is for every single woman, single lady waiting for the waiting for their partner. You need to watch this and be blessed. Definitely, God answers prayers and denial is not a crime. And I want you to know that God is always there for you. Just believe in God, have faith in Him, and definitely God is going to show up for you. Watch this clip that I'm going to put for you and stay blessed and be ministered to and give your life to Christ, be closer to Christ, and God will answer your prayers um, in Jesus' name. So I, I kind of gave you a brief about my story yesterday, but I just wanted to share a bit more before I introduce Pastor Kay this morning. Um, so I was telling you yesterday how um, I was in a relationship for five years. So I just hope that in sharing my story, you'll be able to get something that will help you, especially the single people in the house. So um, in 1999, I was my final year, 98, 99, I was my final year. And um, you know how when you're on campus, they give you this mindset that if you are in final year and they've not received you, or you have not received. But you know the funny thing is that people enter into relationships just because of that, but 95% of those relationships don't end in marriage. So final year had reached now. I was waiting to be received. <laughs> auto received. So anyhow, um, there was this guy, he came to me, he was a medical student. So I was my final year, he, he came to me and proposed. And then by that time, um, I had been struggling with PCOS for about four or five years. I had been diagnosed with PCOS um, and uterine bleeding. So I was literally the woman with the issue of blood. So I, I was constantly on drugs so that I would not bleed. Um, so when he proposed to me and I said, ah, all this love you are saying, just know that doctors have told me I'll not be able to have a child. I have PCOS. No, I told him, doctors say I have PCOS. And for two weeks, Oga disappeared, though. I'd not see him again. So I kind of moved on with my life. But he came back after two weeks and said, ah, that if, that do I know what PCOS means? I said, yes, now I'm not the one dealing with it. Which ones do I know? So he told me, ah, that means you will never be able to have a child. That he had to battle with that. But that the way my faith is, that he seems maybe we can do this. That anyway, if I was still decide to be in a relationship with him, fine. So we started a relationship, five years. It was a bit turbulent, but the truth is that I didn't really hear God. I just used my mental calculations that if you have, if you have a medical condition and a medical doctor comes to you, you can only be God. <laughs> so I planned my life. And we're not going to be in Nigeria, we're going to be in the abroad. So every medical, everything I would need would be available to me. Great guy, born again. He was a Christ lover as well. You know, so everything was just perfect. There was no need to pray. You know what I mean? I did pray about it, but I didn't hear God, and I just moved on. Now, let me say this is very important. And I know that these days, people don't really push that side anymore. They just tell you things like, oh, if you are compatible, if you are this, if he checks all the boxes, let me tell you. A person can check all the boxes, but until God tells you to move, don't move. So, five years into our relationship, it was a bit turbulent at some point. In fact, in the five years, we broke up seven times. And he kept ending it. He will end it, he will come back and beg. He will end it, he will come back and beg. I said, I'm not going anywhere, I'm here. If you were, you are tired. <laughs> you know, so, um, he finally moved to the UK and I was doing my master's in Unilag. And the plan was, after I finished my master's, then I'll go and join him. So one morning, I was praying and then I knew, you know, it's important that you know how God speaks to you. I just felt this very strong presence of God, and I knew God wanted me to separate myself because he wanted to talk to me. So I went back into my room, um, and I was praying. And as I was praying, um, I, the lights came on. There was no light. So I had this CD player then that when light comes on, the music starts playing from where it stopped playing. So I had this Donnie McClurkin song playing. And then he started playing and he was saying, um, will you trust me? What if I ask you to let go of the very thing that you hold so dear? I was singing, yes, I will trust you, Lord. I was at leap in self. <laughs> I didn't know that the things I was saying, God was holding it for me. So I started reading. I was reading John, the book of John, chapter 4, where Jesus met the woman 
at the well. And then he was talking to her about water. And then the woman said, um, give me. So she, she, he said, if you know the person that is telling you about you asking for water, that you will never thirst again. And the woman said, ah, I'm not a mad woman now. Give me the water. And he said something important. He said, go and call your husband. And God showed me from that scripture that the person that is over you determines how far God can use you. So God was about to put something in her hand, but he wanted her to bring her husband, who she would be submitted to. And so she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, you have rightfully said, for you have had five, but the man that you are with is not your husband. And it seemed like that part of the Bible was highlighted. You know that yellow? As if it was just highlighted in my Bible, that the man you are with is not your husband. I said, the man I'm with is not my husband, Bao. <laughs> Somebody that we've been five years, we've done introduction. I said, are you, <laughs> Holy Spirit, don't play with me. This is rough play. And so he said, well, that's all I'm going to say about this. So I started complaining. Why didn't you tell me this many years ago? And then he said to me, but I did. Check your journal of 2003. I said, well, will I find my journal of 2000? I was even still shouting. I've not finished talking. Something just fell from my cupboard. I looked down. My journal of 2003. First page. That day we had quarreled and I was praying. And the Lord said, forget the former things of old, for behold, I do a new thing. I wrote it down, date and time. But I misinterpreted it. And that's why you must get counsel. You can't be in a church like this and be confused. I misinterpreted it to mean that God said we should stop fighting because he wants to do a new thing with both of us. And so that's how I got back into that relationship that God had told me to break two years before. And so I said, well, Lord, the same way you told me is not my husband. It's the same way you would tell me who my husband is because I don't really have the time, sir. Well, I'm not 21 anymore. <laughs> so we have to do something about this and we have to move quickly. And so God started the journey and the process. And so when I, he, so the, I think it was two days after, so I told God, the guy didn't offend me, didn't do anything. The good Christian, everything. So why would I just tell him I'm not doing it again? I said, God, the same way you do this, you tell him or he must break it up. So the next day he called me, long distance relationship. He calls me and says, um, he says, how are you doing? I wasn't really talking. So he said, what's wrong with you? I'm not feeling you. You are not, in short, let's just end this. Uh-uh. I didn't say anything. I kept quiet. The next day he calls me back again. That he, sorry, he doesn't know what came over him. I say, it's the Holy Ghost, sir. <laughs> he was crying, I was crying. But I knew that irrespective of my pain, I needed to obey God. Because God had a, a better plan for me ahead. So God now said, at some point my heart started softening. So I said, God, please, I don't even know what this guy did. Like, you can walk through him. I don't think he's going to. The Lord now asked me, next time he calls you to beg you, ask him that if, I, if you were a pastor, would he marry you? So I pick up my phone. He calls me and I pick up my phone and I say, I want to ask you a question. If I were a pastor, would you marry me? He said, no. He didn't even miss a bit. I say, wait, wait. I wanted to help him. I say, wait. That's me that you are begging like this, that you love. If I were a pastor. He said, no, did I stutter? No, I'm going to marry you if you're a pastor. I don't want that kind of public life. Why? But you never told me. You're go uh. By that time, I've moved on. Because obviously God had bigger plans. Along the line, by this time, Pasquia and I become friends. We went to secondary school together, but we, were, when we didn't even talk once. Because me, I was born again. He was born against. <laughs> so our paths did not cross. So... <laughs> By this time, we had become friends after a reunion. Long story, I don't want to take your time. So we had become friends by that time. By the time we now met, and I told him, I was even telling him, I remember that day, that he was the first person I called when the guy broke up with me. So I, call, I sent him a message, I said, call me. And he didn't have credit or something, he used his mother's phone to call me. <laughs> story for another day. <laughs> so he now calls me and I tell him everything I'm crying, and he's like, wait till, God said this is not the person. I say yes. The person has broken up with you. I say yes. He said, you are crying. Now what's he make you make me carry my mama phone call you? <laughs> he said, obviously God has something better for you. I better go and sleep. And he moved on. So Pasquale was the kind of guy that I would never think of a future with. Because he was very matter of fact. The person that just, I just broke up with was a romantic, you know, send you love letters, open doors for you. There's always one gift or something somewhere he did very Mr. Romantic, everything. The first time Pastor and I went out, and I stood by the door, I said, ah, you can't have opened that car for somebody. Say, everything do your hand. <laughs> so you must understand where I was coming from and the struggle. <laughs> so long and short of this story, we are started getting close, we are started talking. 
Um, this relationship was over. And then one day, um, I couldn't go to my church. And I said, oh, let me even visit Pastor K. Pastors. Let me visit his church for the first time. So I got to his church. Um, after he finished preaching, he saw me and said, ah, you came. Okay, you know what? I'll go and drop you. But just wait for me. I have a few meetings. While I was waiting, I was, I was just sitting down. I felt this very strong presence of God again, like God wanted to speak to me. So I finished praying in tongues, and I was just reading the story of where Samuel anointed David. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, um, so I was reading it, and then Samuel asked, uh, no, yeah, Samuel asked Jesse, that don't you have any other sons? And then he answered, he said, there remaineth yet one, and he keepeth the sheep. And then he said, we will not sit until he comes. And that same thing that happened to me that time happened again. And when it happened this time, the Holy Spirit asked me a question. He said, what position is Kingsley? I said, he's the youngest in his family. He said, what do pastors do? I said, they take care of the sheep. He said, arise, anoint him for he's the one. Now, let me tell you. The reason why I'm sharing this is because the world makes us think that God does not direct his children. He said, my sheep know me. They hear my voice. The voice of a stranger they will not hear. God still does supernatural things. Now, this may not be the only way God leads. This is how God leads me. He leads me through the word. It always has been. So when I married Pastor K, I told Pastor K when he proposed to me, I said, oh, that doctor said I may never be able to have a child. Long and short of it, he told me, go and sit down. You're going to have two children. I've named them David, David, and he moved on with his life. <laughs> but let me tell you why I'm sharing how important it is. It's because the source of a thing is the sustenance. If your marriage is built on the word, it is built on God. God will sustain your marriage. So yesterday I told you that it took me about eight years to have my first biological child. But through that journey, it was the same way that God led me to meet my husband that he led me on the process of how I have my children. So I said that like every other woman, running around doctor to doctor, until God shared two scriptures with me. I'll just share them with you. I'll read them because I'm reading them because they're in message translation and I don't know. So I told you my mom used to worry me about, go and see this doctor, go and see that doctor. And there was a lot of drama and I don't have time for that. Um, but these were two scriptures that saved me. Isaiah 8, 19. It says, when, they when people tell you, try out the fortune tellers, consult the spiritualist. Why not tap into the spirit world, get in touch with the dead? He said, tell them, no, we're going to study the scriptures. People who try the other ways get nowhere. A dead end. So, from the very beginning, oh, thank you, it's up. So from the very beginning, I knew that God wanted me to just abandon any other thing but staying in the word, stay in the word and study the scriptures. But one particular day, I said, ah, I beg, how can someone just be reading Bible? It's hard though. Don't be reading Bible to get pregnant. Ah, it was a very hard thing. So my father said to me one day, my father's very quiet, so that was the point where I was almost breaking. There will always be a breaking point, but you must set your face like a flint. Do not be moved by what anybody is saying, no matter how close that person is to you. My father called me, he said, when you have a mechanical problem, where do you go? I say, mechanic. He says, so when you have a medical problem, where do you go? I say, doctor. He says, so this thing you are doing, does it make sense? You are reading Bible. Go to the doctors. But God had told me, tell them we will study the scriptures. So the final day, that final day, a friend of mine came and said, oh, there's this um, doctor. That this doctor is a Christian, he's born again, he will even give you confessions. You know, Satan always tries to make things look good. And so I said, okay, no problem. I went to the man, the man said, let's do tests. I don't even want to bore you with a lot of things. So that week that I was supposed to go and do the test, I went to my friend's house, the friend that took me to that doctor. When I got there, the friend said, I met one woman there. And so the woman was saying something about Davida. So I said, ah, that's my children's name. Oh, David and Davida twins. She now said, oh, those are her children's names too. I said, I'm coming to sew into your life. Oh, hey, finish greeting as I was leaving. My friend was escorting me. She said, do you know that woman? I said, I don't know her. I said, I don't know her. I said, I don't know her. Now, who she be? She said, that's your doctor's wife. I said, ah, my doctor has David and Davida. He said, wait, David and Davida. Now, faith, the woman, they talk. I got into my car. I wept. The Holy Spirit kept saying to me, why won't you let me help you? The person you are running to for help is looking for the exact same thing you are looking for. Why won't you let me help you? What are the odds that the, their own children's name that they are standing in faith to is David and Davida? Look at what God said to me. Um, Isaiah 30 from verse 15. It says, God, in the car, God, the master, the holy of Israel has this solemn counsel. Your salvation requires you to turn back to me and stop your silly efforts to save yourself. 
your strength will come from settling down in complete dependence on me, the very thing you've been unwilling to do. And so the same way God spoke to me about who to marry was the same way God delivered me from running around with doctors. Today I have three amazing children. Only God could have done it without medical intervention. Only God. But not just God, because I had a great man stand beside me. A man who believed in everything. He believed, he, he lives a life of faith. A life of the word. There's no question that this man not only preaches the word, but he lives the word. I remember when I told him that this is what God said to me. When I got to the office crying, my husband sat on the floor and laughed. He laughed, why? Because he said, I know God, Sha. When God is ready. I sat down and I started doing what he was teaching. I started learning to obey God and to live the way he was living. My husband is a man of faith. Anything he's teaching you are things that he has practiced. Things that his ears have heard, his eyes have seen, but his hands have also handled. So this morning, with Jesus' joy, it is my honor and my privilege to bring up my pastor, my friend, my brother, my lover, my king. Please help me welcome Pastor King Sleokongwa. Should I take him back to Lagos? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share.